China gives Dark Fleet Antarctica bases to Earth Alliance for building future space fleets. A new intelligence update from Valnek and the Galactic Federation of Worlds. You are listening to Exopolitics Today with Dr. Michael Sala your source for the uncensored truth regarding the human, extraterrestrial, social, global, and political agenda. Click the like button and subscribe to this channel. Visit exopolitics.org and sign up to receive our email notifications, news, and information. Be informed and be aware with Exopolitics Today. And now, here's Dr. Michael Sala. On September 24, I received a new update about recent developments in Antarctica concerning former Dark Fleet bases taken over by China and how these were being turned over to the Earth Alliance as a result of the Jupiter Agreements. The update was released by Valnek from the Galactic Federation of Worlds through Megan Rose, who again relayed the information. After receiving the report, I asked a series of questions which were relayed back to Valnek. I received these answers on September 25 and immediately began experiencing severe computer hacking. The cursor on my computer would move independently and I could not use the necessary programs for creating articles and videos despite activating my McAfee antivirus program and twice rebooting my computer. Thankfully, after an hour or two, the problem disappeared. I suspect my computer was hacked and its functions restored after a third party intervened. The incident was a reminder of the importance of the information I was receiving and the need to release it publicly as quickly as possible. Without further ado, here is what Valnek reported on September 24. Quote, Valnek, I am happy to report that many successful missions that the bases in Antarctica are cleared and in control of the Earth Alliance. The Alliance has worked alongside members of the Federation to clear the Dark Fleet and its allies from its numerous bases. This is not new information, but rather relevant to agreements made with China, what you have called the Artemis Accords. End quote. While China is not currently a party to the Artemis Accords, these are the foundation of the multinational alliance that has been created around the US as the hub. Both China and Russia at first opposed the Accords, but after their popularity led to the Galactic Federation choosing the US as the leader of the 14 spacefaring nations and aerospace corporations present at the July Jupiter meetings, China had to consequently shift its position. This was necessary if China was to receive any advanced aerospace technologies from the Federation after the Draconian Empire, the Sakaar and Orion Alliance tall greys had to leave our solar system, developments which were covered in previous articles. China's compliance with the Jupiter Agreements as a condition for receiving new aerospace defence technologies is directly addressed by Valnek. Quote, as I have previously mentioned, China had limited access to the new space station and other zones as outlined in the Jupiter Agreements. Part of the reason for limited access was also their interest in taking control of the Dark Fleet bases and expanding their space program in this area. As many know, this area has been used by the Dark Fleet and the Sakaar Empire for human experimentation, technological manufacturing and also human trafficking. End quote. Valnek described in an earlier update publicly released on September 8, that a number of planetary defence outposts were being built for global security and surveillance purposes. These defence outposts, large space stations, would use advanced cloaking technologies and control an impenetrable shield preventing the Draconians and Orions from future infiltration using interdimensional portal technologies. The Federation was helping the Earth Alliance build the necessary defence technologies in Earth orbit and on the Moon to deal with a potential return of our former planetary overlords. If China was to benefit from the defence technologies being shared by the Federation, it was obliged to cooperate, especially when it came to the former Dark Fleet bases in Antarctica that had been used for nefarious purposes. Valnek continued, Quote, Our agreements with them, China, were very strict. 
they must agree to relinquish control of certain areas of these bases and they will have access to the stations built by the Alliance and the corporations. This is important as the Federation's goal is to unify the space programs and countries so that they work together for the good of humanity and one day join membership in the Federation. It is important to note that once a planet or species joins the Federation, they are obligated to work for peace and balance in the universe and are no longer a threat to the rest of the galaxy. China agreed to these terms and is now working alongside the Alliance. End quote. These cooperative principles are fully described in the Galactic Federation's Prime Directive, which was released on September 6 by Valnek's colleague Thorhan to Elena Danan. Surprisingly, I found that the fictional Prime Directive developed in the Star Trek series and released in text form in a 1986 book, The Federation, was based on the real Prime Directive that was later released by Thorhan. According to Thorhan, the book's authors, Bernard Menke and Rick Stewart, and or Gene Roddenberry, had been given the real Prime Directive. My analysis of the two Prime Directives showed they derived from the same source as explained in an extract from my September 9 webinar, Our Star Trek Future. The comparison is available for free on YouTube. Analysis of the Federation's Prime Directive makes clear why China is obliged to cooperate with the US-led Earth Alliance if it is to receive advanced defense technologies from the Federation. This led to the handover of Antarctica's former Dark Fleet bases, as Valnek explains. Quote, I know Dr. Sala will find it very interesting as to what we are using these bases for. I can report that some of the manufacturing for the Starfleet will take place here. As your planet and its governments have proven to be very complicated and interesting, it was also necessary for China to agree to our terms due to its availability of certain supplies. To my knowledge, there is much production of many supplies that are shipped from this country all over Terra. This has proven to also be the case with building the Starfleet. China is working with the Alliance to manufacture these materials and supplies. Much of the human workforce from the Dark Fleet have also been co-opted to be employed by these programs in the interest of keeping their jobs. Our ships, the technology to build these ships, is also readily available in Antarctica, which makes it a feasible place to start production of these materials. This is good news and we continue to move forward. End quote. It is now clear that one of the inducements that led to China agreeing to join the US-led Earth Alliance was that it would play a key role in building the future planetary defense technologies out of Antarctica bases that were previously owned by the Dark Fleet. China's recent history of becoming the world's manufacturing hub for consumer products made it a logical choice to do the same in the secretive world of advanced spacecraft construction. As I discuss in my 2020 book, Rise of the Red Dragon, Origins and Threat of China's Secret Space Program, China has been secretly building large, exotically propelled spacecraft in remote locations in order to one day challenge US space dominance. I asked Valnek five questions about his update and what follows are his responses. Question one. Does he know what happened to the slaves, workers, etc. at the Antarctica bases once the Dark Fleet and Sakaar left? How many people were involved? Thousands? Tens of thousands? Etc. Valnek. The exact number I cannot say. It was in the tens of thousands. This includes the slaves, but also workers as well. Most, if not all, the slaves had been experimented on. This also includes humans but hybridized species of humans as well. Like the super soldiers from Mars, these people are being cared for by the Alliance in medical facilities. I can also say that hybrids or humans must have undergone a great deal of mind control, with implants placed in the cerebral cortex. This requires the Federation to assist the Alliance in deactivating the implant and assimilating the brain to its original function. The hybrids, of course, require the Federation to intervene since they carry genomes that are unknown to the Terran military and therefore providing medical treatment would not be appropriate. 
the Alliance and the Federation have the ability to transport medical treatments to these bases to give them proper treatment. What your people call medbeds is the technology or very similar technology that is being used. The workers have been given new employment options with the Alliance in these areas. Their help is useful in explaining the facilities and how they operate in some cases. Of course, these people are employed personnel and are not elite workers who directly reported to the Dark Fleet. End quote. In an earlier article, I described some of the human rights abuses that were occurring at these Dark Fleet and corporate-run Antarctica bases. The scale of the human suffering that occurred was massive, but to date, no one has been brought to justice for these crimes. Thankfully, those victims that survived are being taken care of in Federation facilities. The Q&A continued. Question 2. Can Valnex say how many Dark Fleet bases were taken over by the Chinese and their approximate locations? For example, Queen Maud Land, West Antarctica, etc. Valnek. This information I'm not at liberty to disclose completely. I can say between three to five bases were handed over to the Alliance and their respective locations I cannot say. But you are welcome to speculate. When we are able to disclose the purpose for these bases, if the time comes, it may help your inquisition. End quote. It's worth separating these three to five former Dark Fleet bases to the six large industrial bases used by a corporate consortium that built interstellar craft for the Dark Fleet, which Corey Good said he witnessed back in January 2016 during a visit to Antarctica. The latter are still in the possession of the corporations, which will now play a role in building interstellar capable spacecraft for the Earth Alliance as a later response by Valnek confirms. My Q&A with Valnek continues. Question 3. Valnek referred to certain parts of these former Dark Fleet bases first handed off to China, have now been turned over to the Earth Alliance as required by the Jupiter Agreements. Does that mean China still controls other sections of the bases where it can do what it likes under certain limitations? Quote, Valnek. China does not have complete control over any bases at this time. The agreements are written as such. The goal of the Federation is to ensure that the countries work together and are organised in how they approach their respective space programs. China was reluctant at first to relinquish control, as I mentioned previously. They had many self-interests. While the United States was chosen to be the leader of these countries and their programs, they are exactly that leading the space fleet with the intention of unity and peace between the countries of Terra. China originally claimed some bases in Antarctica through no legal agreements and quickly handed them over after the Jupiter Agreements. Many of your countries used the military assets against each other for land and conquest. The Federation has found this way of doing things very interesting, considering the much more hostile threats to planet Terra in the galaxy. We are making change and progress together, moving forward as one planet. End quote. Clearly, Valnek was referring to the respective leaders of the Earth Alliance being made to recognize the overall strategic situation concerning Earth in the wider galaxy and that there was no real alternative to international cooperation to dealing with potential future threats despite significant political cultural and economic differences between Earth's major nations. The next question addressed the fate of corporate bases in Antarctica used to build the Dark Fleet's interstellar craft. Question 4. The Dark Fleet worked very closely with the corporate consortium that was building many of the large starships for the Dark Fleet. Has this corporate conglomerate handed over their facilities to other companies, or Earth Alliance, or have they realigned themselves to now build spacecraft for the Earth Alliance? Quote, Megan Rose. Valnek is amused by this question. Valnek, I cannot disclose this information in the interest of Megan's safety and ongoing operations. End quote. My speculation here is that the corporate consortium, also known as Interplanetary Corporate Conglomerate, that built the Dark Fleet, is now using the same facilities to build interstellar craft for the Earth Alliance. After all, corporations are driven by the profit motive and can quickly adapt to the needs of new customers and new conditions. 
Presumably, the corporate executives implicated in the use of slave labour, genetic experiments or other abuses that occurred when Dark Fleet vessels were being built have been retired and or brought to justice for their complicity in such crimes. This is a very sensitive issue and it's understandable why Valnack was hesitant to provide more details for Megan's safety. My final question and Valnack's response follows. Question 5. To understand the big picture, the mass production of anti-gravity and advanced health technologies is now happening on the Moon and Antarctica and is to be distributed by the Earth Alliance. Similar facilities on Mars have been destroyed or taken over by the indigenous Martians while similar shipbuilding facilities on Ceres have been left for its residents to use as they wish. Is there a timetable for when the advanced technologies being mass produced on the Moon and Antarctica will be released to the rest of humanity? Quote, Valnek, yes, indeed. The indigenous Martians are in the process of taking back control of their planet, the same as planet Terra. I cannot give an exact timetable, as it depends on the corporations and their manufacturing speed, among a few other variables. We have a goal in mind, of course. As I have mentioned previously, the corporations have chosen the infrastructure to meet our time requirements and demands. I have also stated previously that there is a time constraint and we wish to accomplish these projects relatively quickly. I can say that most with a logical perspective, considering how large this operation is, would be pleased with the time constraints and goals that we have put in place. End quote. We know from a September 7 update from Valnek that the space fleets, Starfleet, being built on the Moon and now also in Antarctica, combine both indigenous Earth and Galactic Federation defence technologies. Without knowing too much about the classified construction technologies being used on the Moon and Antarctica to build an entirely new generation of spacecraft for the Earth Alliance, we can get an idea of the timeline from estimates of how long it takes to build new generations of nuclear-powered submarines and aircraft carriers. Recently, Australia reached agreements with the US and UK to build a new fleet of nuclear-powered submarines as part of the new AUKUS alliance thereby greatly upsetting France, which was going to build a conventional diesel-powered submarine fleet for Australia instead. Production of the first Australian nuclear submarines is expected to take the rest of this decade to complete. I believe the nuclear submarine building project is a cover for Australia participating in the massive Starship construction process that the Earth Alliance has begun. The timetables for the respective launches of Australia's nuclear submarines and the Earth Alliance's Starfleet are likely to be similar. This is not accidental. Australia is a vast continent, and it would not be surprising if remote locations were to be used to complement what was secretly being built on the Moon and under the ice shelves of Antarctica. It's also worth pointing out that Secret Space Program insider William Tompkins said that the next generation of Solar Warden space carriers would be ready for deployment in the early 2030s. All this gives us an idea for estimating how long it will take to build new fleets of spacecraft for the Earth Alliance. However, it can be expected that advanced medical technologies currently being mass-produced on the Moon, as discussed in a prior update by Valnek, can be released much earlier than the completion of the Earth Alliance's future Starfleet. Doing so would predictably increase public support for the massive spacecraft construction secretly underway on the Moon, Antarctica and perhaps Australia as well. Thanks to Megan Rose for once again relaying Valnek's update and answers to my questions. Note, all updates and interviews concerning the Galactic Federation as relayed through Elena Denard and Megan Rose can be found at my exopolitics.org website. Further note, on October 9, I will hold my final webinar for 2021 on the topic of Galactic Federations, Councils and Secret Space Programs. The webinar will conclude with a special panel featuring Megan Rose, Elena Danan and myself. This has been Dr. Michael Sala with Exopolitics Today.